Hello and welcome to Analyzer Shorts, the series where we show you bits and pieces of Analyzer Pro that should help and inspire you in your daily work as a traffic accident reconstructionist. Today we're going to talk about a real case um, that happened in the country of Austria and uh, we're going to discuss yeah, the approach um, we chose to solve this case. Uh, we did some preparation uh, here. You can see a two-day uh, photogrammetry which was actually taken out of a 3D photogrammetry. So Analyze automatically uh, loads 3D photogrammetries and uh, creates also 2D images of them um, because it's quite useful to work in 2D and then later look into the result in 3D. Second, we have uh, put in the final position of these two cars. Um, we could establish these positions from photos we got that I'm going to show you a little bit later. And I have also loaded uh, vehicle data from the vehicle database. So uh, blue vehicle is a Mazda MX-5 and our red one is an Audi A1. Excellent. Um, so let's have a look at the scene. Again, these are the final positions. And uh, the blue one is coming from the left side here. And the red one is coming from the bottom and wants to go to the top. And they collide. Blue one says, uh, I'm coming from here and I'm going with a uh, 30 kilometers per hour. When it was in the middle of the crossroad, I could spot a vehicle coming from my right and I brake immediately and uh, have a full stop here in this uh, final position. And uh, the blue one uh, argues that the red one has actually stopped therefore given him the right of way which he would typically or in such a situation not have in Austria and uh, so blue one says the red one stopped therefore lost the right of way he carried on but the red one accelerated and the red one of course says no I was driving here I was driving carefully um, and the blue one took my right of way um, yeah so that's the situation. Um, let's also see what our two parties say in detail. So the, the, this is what our blue one says. So I noticed him when I was in the middle. A little bit later it comes to collision and this is my final position. The red one in return says, yeah, I'm standing here and I'm accelerating here, but I want to turn actually to the right and uh, I collide and this is my final position. Um, that actually cannot be true because uh, like that final position cannot be true because we can objectify the final position uh, with the photos uh, that were done uh, at the location at the time. Um, it's probably assumable that the driver wanted to or placed her vehicle here um, when she was asked because she wanted to turn right, but actually it is standing uh, like it's um, marked here by us. Uh, again, we could spot that with the photos. Okay, so essentially that's the that's the information we have plus some images. Okay, so this is the Audi, um, we, we labeled him vehicle red and the other one vehicle blue, in fact both are black, but yeah, that just makes it confusing. Um, so this is uh, the Audi, you can see in his uh, right front corner in driving direction, um, this plastic part went down and we have a little dent over here. Unfortunately quality of photos is quite poor, but that's 
yeah, sometimes the reality of working in this field. Yeah, further photos of amazing quality. And here we see the final position. We can clearly see uh, that, for example, the left front wheel is close to this uh, part on the street, uh, which is all this one here. So it is wrong that she's a little bit on the right. But yeah. Um, further images. Yeah, we can establish the final positions from these photos. But it's quite hard to yeah, tell the images. One thing that is probably interesting is that we have a piece of plastic stuck here in the Mazda's uh, wheel. The Mazda is in our sketch, the blue one. Yeah, and that's essentially all we have. Okay, so um, let's start with a collision analysis of the two vehicles. And I'm taking the vehicles. And what I'm doing now is I'm placing them more or less in the same direction like they are in the final position, just moved back a little bit so it matches the damages. So maybe like this. More or less. Okie doke. So I think in this case it's particularly difficult to estimate collision velocities from the photos because that front plastic part can pop off quite easily. From the mud stuff on the blue one we hardly see anything on the photos. So instead of estimating some collision speeds we can uh, make a more educated guess with just calculating stuff. So what I'm doing is I am measuring the distance the blue one went from collision to final position which is roughly 3.5 meters and now I can use a module called a calculator where we can do quick side calculations so if someone breaks for uh, 3.5 meters and uh, yeah decelerates um, let's say with an average deceleration of maybe 6 meters per square second, we get that his velocity is 30, uh, 23 kilometers per hour before that. That doesn't have to be the case, of course, but it is an, a good first guess. So let's give the blue one 23 kilometers per hour. Uh, let's do the same for the red one. So red one was saying that initially she was standing here in front of that uh, yeah, little rip in the concrete. So let's just measure how far from top to top should it go. Okay, 4.9, 4.8, yeah, something like that, 4.8 meters. And she said she accelerated, so let's give her an acceleration, uh, sorry, a distance of 4.8 meters and an acceleration maybe, well, typical acceleration values are between 1 and 2 meters per square second. I would say he's pro she's probably not racing, but she's also not crawling. So let's give her something in the middle. So 1.5, which leads to 14 kilometers an hour if she actually accelerates in one go from here to here with 1.5. So that's our first educated guess. Um, other than that we need to put in some braking behavior so the blue one has seen uh, at least she said uh, that she has seen the red one so let's say from collision on she was actually fully braking already for the red one we can say oh maybe she hasn't seen her so we can give her reaction time 
0 0.8 seconds and then let her break uh, fully with 100%. And uh, yeah, bear in mind these are just estimations that doesn't have to be like necessarily the case. This is just our first uh, yeah, attempt. I'm setting the impact point, impact point for the uh, momentum calculation and I can press play now and see what happens. And yeah, well, one thing we obviously can see now is that it definitely wasn't that case. Um, the blue one is rotating way too far, the red one is going way too far up. So, of course, it might make a difference if we say, okay, the red one is not waiting for 0 0.8 seconds um, with his or her braking, but actually braking from the collision onwards already. Let's see if that makes a difference. Yeah, a little bit, but it's still going too far and the blue one has still way too much rotation. So I'm using now the delta T button, which uh, will give me the final position without uh, like letting the whole simulation run. And then I'm going to decrease the speed of the red one to see how things change. So I'm going slower, 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 slower before we have almost no rotation of the blue one, something like that. The red one is actually not moving much forward after the collision, which yeah works much better uh, with our final positions. Blue one is not reaching the final position yet, uh, but of course what we can do is we can decrease his braking a little bit, so something like that. And yeah, that looks kind of decent in my opinion. Of course you could spend now more time in perfectly uh, uh, hitting the final position, but in my opinion it doesn't change much in that case. Okay, um, once I've done that I'll transfer my calculation data to kinematics and I have now my situation here where the two cars are going into the final position. Um, well, this is of course only a part of the uh, calculation because the interesting part here is the pre-collision analysis. Um, so let's actually try to analyze two different variants. So variant A, um, we could say, okay, the blue one, uh, sorry, the red one is accelerating from here to here uh, in one go and we'll analyze the visual behavior and uh, possibilities of the blue one uh, in that situation or option B we let the red one accelerate and then break down again so he ends up with this five kilometers per hour uh, here in the collision and for both options we'll analyze how the um, visual situation for the uh, blue car has been and if the red one really offered uh, her right of way in that context. Um, let's start with the pre-collision behavior of the blue one and let's see what she said. Okay, she said she noticed her here Oh, these are a lot now, a lot of in between positions. I hope you can see it. But essentially, this is our rear from the collision, and this is where she said, Oh, I started braking. So that's roughly one meter from here to here. Um, and the reason I measured this is because now I can say, Okay, you have been probably braking for this one meter. So distance one and deceleration if we stay with the same uh, six meters per square second. Before braking we usually have a build-up time uh, default value for that is 0 0.2 seconds um, till the brakes like 
unfold the full power. And before that, of course, we have a reaction time. Default value here is one second. Uh, yeah, should be, should be definitely good. Okay. So what we get now is a driving line where the blue one reacts, build ups and breaks and then collides and goes to the final, to the final position. Uh, that one I won't need anymore. Uh, second thing, uh, is for the red one and there we have two options now so let's do the first one first I'm measuring from here to here because she said yeah I'll I started roughly from here so that's 4.8 meters that she had and in one version we're going to say that she's accelerating from zero to here to a velocity of five kilometers per hour because that's what we got from our collision analysis. So let's put in an acceleration phase. Let's say distance 4.8 meters, initial velocity zero, and we can calculate. So that situation is, well, of course, technically possible, but her acceleration is only 0.2 meters per square second, which is extremely low. And yeah, very unlikely, but still technically possible. And we'll check the visual situation for that. But uh, first, let's also do the um, alternative calculation where we, sh where sh we say that she first accelerates from here and then uh, reacts and, build, uh, and breaks before collision again. So what I'm doing is I'm going to vehicle number four make a copy from two to four. Now I have two identical vehicles here. I delete that acceleration column. And now I'm using a module called uh, drive off and brake. Vehicle number four, starting from phase number four, because that's the first one that is available here. Initial velocity zero, build up time for acceleration zero. Acceleration, well, probably 1.5 is good. Uh, reaction period one second, build up time for braking 0 0.2, deceleration, I guess we can also give her six, final speed is the collision speed, so five, uh, that stays that way, and total distance is 4.8. And we can calculate again. So what we got now is here phases before the collision of braking, build up reaction, and first accelerating. And we can now see how the cars move differently. We can also synchronize the movement of the blue one because the red cars are now going longer than the other one. So putting this flag symbol for synchronizing it. We can have a look at the diagram that gets automatically uh, created for us. So we have the red one looks slightly different than the dark red one. And of course, only one version for the blue one. Um, let me quickly delete this and now what we're going to do, okay, yeah, one little thing. So as you can see here, the car is outside of our 3D photogrammetry, which will result in something that looks a little bit bad because this is above ground. And if I now move the car here, it will jump up, which, yeah, of course, isn't the reality. So we're quickly going to fix that with a little ramp. So I'm just drawing that, telling it that's a terrain of 1.2 meters high. And now we have our situation with our blue car going here. Light red one is accelerating through, dark red one is accelerating later, but then actually they're colliding at the same time. So um, 
what we now want to have is uh, we want to um, have a look at their lines of sight. So uh, what I can do is I can switch off vehicle number four. I can put in the line of sight from vehicle number one to vehicle number two. And what you can see is that there is a line drawn from roughly the driver's position to the front of the, vehicle, of the red vehicle. We could, of course, change that, but there's no need here. And we can see already in 2D here that uh, here, like at least here, the red one was already moving. And here, the blue one could have seen the red one moving. Um, let's also check that in 3D by putting ourselves into into the position of the blue driver going here and we can see all the time the red one we can see him already here and please bear in mind that when this photogrammetry was made there was probably not a car parking here uh, but even if it was the defining thing would be probably the corner of, of that garden fence over here but this is very very seeable so the version where the light red one was accelerating all the way through is definitely a, a situation where the where the red one had the right of way and the blue one should have stopped uh, let's check the other version so I'm switching off number two switching on number four I am again putting in the visual line from now one to four. Uh, let's have a look at the at the data as well. So here red one is moving already while she can first see him and therefore she needs to see how the wheels are accelerating. So also in this situation, she should have been able to stop in time. So actually the blue one who sued the red one is wrong. She should have stopped um, and yeah, wasn't, uh, wasn't given the right of way uh, here. Uh, yeah, so that's our scenario. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, let us know your thoughts about it. Uh, and uh, till next time, I wish you a lovely day. Goodbye.